The East Coast of the United States, home to millions and a cornerstone of global economics, faces a potential threat of unimaginable proportions. Scientists have identified a scenario where the collapse of the Cumbre Vieja volcano in the Canary Islands could trigger a colossal tsunami, potentially reaching heights of 3,000 feet. This mega-tsunami crossing the Atlantic at jet-like speeds could devastate coastal cities from Miami to Boston. While the likelihood remains debated, the sheer scale of destruction warrants serious consideration. Join us as we explore the science behind this potential catastrophe, its far-reaching impacts, and the measures being taken to prepare for the unthinkable. The Cumbre Vieja Volcano Threat Nestled on the island of La Palma in the Canary Islands, the Cumbre Vieja volcano stands as a sleeping giant, its potential for catastrophe hidden beneath a veil of natural beauty. This active volcanic ridge, stretching along the southern third of the island, has been the subject of intense scientific scrutiny and public fascination for decades. Cumbre Vieja's geological history is a tale of growth and instability. Over hundreds of thousands of years, successive eruptions have built up the volcano's mass, creating a steep and potentially unstable western flank. This precarious situation is exacerbated by the volcano's location on an oceanic island, where the constant battering of Atlantic waves further undermines its structural integrity. The volcano's recent history has only heightened concerns. In 1949, a significant eruption lasted for two weeks, during which a conspicuous crack appeared along the volcano's crest. This fissure, stretching for several kilometers, was seen by some scientists as evidence of the western flank's increasing instability. The 1971 eruption, while less dramatic, served as a reminder of the volcano's ongoing activity. September 2021 marked the beginning of Cumbre Vieja's most recent eruption, lasting for nearly three months. This event, while devastating for local communities, provided scientists with valuable data about the volcano's behavior and potential for future activity. The crux of the Cumbre Vieja threat lies in a hypothesis first proposed by geologists Stephen Ward and Simon Day in 2001. They suggested that a future eruption could trigger a massive landslide, causing a significant portion of the volcano's western flank potentially up to 500 cubic kilometers of rock, to collapse into the Atlantic Ocean. This cataclysmic event, they argued, could generate a mega-tsunami with the power to cross the entire Atlantic. The mechanics of such a collapse are both fascinating and terrifying. As magma pushes upward during an eruption, it could theoretically cause the unstable flank to separate and slide. The entry of this enormous mass into the ocean would displace a massive volume of water, creating a series of waves that could reach initial heights of hundreds of meters. While the Ward and Day hypothesis remains controversial, with many scientists questioning its likelihood and scale, it has nonetheless sparked important discussions about volcanic hazards and tsunami risks. The threat posed by Cumbre Vieja serves as a stark reminder of the immense forces at work beneath the Earth's surface and the potential for natural disasters to impact areas far from their source. As monitoring technologies improve and our understanding of volcanic systems deepens, the scientific community continues to watch Cumbre Vieja closely, aware that its next eruption could provide crucial insights into the true nature of this slumbering threat. Modeling the Mega Tsunami the concept of a mega tsunami generated by the collapse of Cumbre Vieja has captivated scientists and the public alike, spurring numerous attempts to model and predict its potential impact. These models, ranging from simple calculations to complex computer simulations, paint a picture of an event unprecedented in recorded history. Initial models proposed by Ward and Day suggested a truly catastrophic scenario. Their simulations indicated that the collapse could generate waves reaching heights of 100 meters, 328 feet, at the source. As these waves propagated across the Atlantic, they were predicted to maintain significant height and energy, potentially striking the eastern seaboard of North America with waves up to 25 meters, 82 feet high. These early models, however, were met with skepticism from many in the scientific community. 
Critics argued that they relied on overly simplistic assumptions and failed to account for factors that could diminish the tsunami's power over long distances. This led to a new wave of more sophisticated modeling efforts. More recent simulations have employed advanced computational techniques incorporating detailed bathymetric data and complex fluid dynamics. These models generally predict less severe but still significant outcomes. Some suggest that by the time the waves reach the American coastline, they might be reduced to heights of 3 to 10 meters, 10 to 33 feet. While less dramatic than earlier predictions, such wave heights would still pose a severe threat to coastal communities. One key area of focus in these models has been the mechanics of the initial landslide. Researchers have explored various scenarios considering factors such as the volume of material involved, the speed of the collapse, and the interaction between the falling debris and the ocean. These variables significantly influence the size and energy of the resulting wave. Another crucial aspect of the modeling process has been the examination of how the tsunami would propagate across the Atlantic. Scientists have studied how factors like underwater topography, ocean currents, and the Coriolis effect might influence the wave's path and energy. Some models suggest that the tsunami might not travel in a straight line, but could be deflected or focused by underwater features, potentially concentrating its energy on specific coastal areas. The variability in these models highlights the challenges inherent in predicting such a complex and unprecedented event. Each simulation relies on a set of assumptions and simplifications, leading to a range of possible outcomes. This uncertainty has fueled ongoing debate within the scientific community about the true potential of a Cumbre Vieja-generated mega-tsunami. Despite their differences, these models serve a crucial purpose. They help scientists and policymakers understand the potential risks and inform decisions about monitoring, early warning systems, and coastal planning. As modeling techniques continue to advance, incorporating more data and more sophisticated physics, our understanding of this potential threat grows ever more nuanced. Potential Impacts on the East Coast The prospect of a mega tsunami striking the east coast of the United States paints a sobering picture of widespread devastation. While the exact magnitude of such an event remains uncertain, even conservative estimates suggest impacts that would dwarf any coastal disaster in American history. Major metropolitan areas along the eastern seaboard, from Miami to Boston, would bear the brunt of this catastrophic event. These cities, home to millions and centers of economic activity, could face inundation levels unseen since their founding. Low-lying areas of New York City, including parts of Manhattan and extensive sections of Brooklyn and Queens, could be submerged under meters of water. The iconic skyline, a symbol of American prosperity, might be forever altered. Critical infrastructure would be among the first casualties. Ports, the lifeblood of international trade, would likely be destroyed or rendered inoperable for months, if not years. Major airports like JFK, LaGuardia, and Miami International, all situated near the coast, could be severely damaged. The loss of these transportation hubs would not only cripple local economies, but disrupt global supply chains, sending shockwaves through the world economy. Power grids, already strained in many coastal areas, would face unprecedented challenges. Nuclear power plants along the coast, designed to withstand significant natural disasters, might be pushed beyond their limit. The potential for radioactive contamination would add another layer of complexity to an already dire situation. The human toll of such an event is almost unfathomable. Millions could be displaced, creating a refugee crisis within the United States on a scale never before seen. Emergency services, overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of the disaster, would struggle to provide even basic aid. The psychological impact on survivors faced with the loss of homes, livelihoods, and loved ones would be profound and long-lasting. Environmental consequences would extend far beyond the immediate destruction. Sewage treatment plants and industrial facilities along the coast, if breached, could release a toxic soup into the floodwater. The resulting pollution could render large swaths of land uninhabitable for years and devastate marine ecosystems already under stress from climate change and overfishing. The economic impact would reverberate globally. Wall Street, the heart of the global financial system, could be offline for an extended period, potentially triggering a worldwide economic crisis. 
Insurance companies faced with claims orders of magnitude larger than anything previously experienced might collapse, leaving millions without the means to rebuild. Long-term recovery would pose unprecedented challenges. The question of whether to rebuild in vulnerable areas or retreat from the coast would become a central political and social issue. Climate change considerations, already a contentious topic, would take on new urgency as coastal communities grapple with the reality of rising sea levels and the potential for future disasters. While the full extent of a mega tsunami's impact remains in the realm of speculation, it's clear that such an event would reshape the East Coast and, indeed, the entire nation in profound and lasting ways. Likelihood the question of how likely a Cumbre Vieja triggered mega tsunami truly is remains a subject of intense debate within the scientific community. While the potential for catastrophic impact is clear, the probability of such an event occurring in the near future is far less certain. Many geologists argue that the likelihood of a massive flank collapse at Cumbre Vieja is relatively low, at least on human timescales. They point out that such large-scale collapses are rare events in geological history, often occurring over thousands or even millions of years. The volcano's structure, while potentially unstable, has withstood numerous eruptions and seismic events over its long history without catastrophic failure. However, others caution against complacency. They argue that the unique geological setting of Cumbre Vieja combined with ongoing volcanic activity and the effects of climate change, could increase the risk of a major collapse. The unpredictable nature of geological processes means that while the probability might be low, the potential consequences are so severe that the threat cannot be ignored. This uncertainty poses significant challenges for preparedness efforts. Emergency management agencies, particularly those along the east coast of the United States, must balance the need to prepare for a low-probability, high-impact event against more immediate and frequent threats, like hurricanes and nor'easters. Despite these challenges, steps are being taken to improve readiness. Monitoring of Cumbre Vieja has intensified in recent years, with a network of seismometers, GPS stations, and other instruments providing real-time data on the volcano's activity. This enhanced surveillance allows for better early warning capabilities, potentially providing crucial hours of advance notice in the event of a collapse. There you have it. It's now time to hear from you. Have you lived through a major coastal disaster like a hurricane or severe flooded? How devastating was the experience? Let us know in the comments below.